Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 103. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. Okay, everyone, welcome one more time to the Cashflow Diary Podcast. My name is JM, your host, and I am so glad that you are here. Here's the thing. Many of you have accused me of being perpetually excited all the time. And you know what? It's kind of true. Can't help it. It just is what it is. Now, Today's guest, though, is going to be an expert in helping you maintain highest energy levels necessary to go out there and become the bigger, better, badder entrepreneur that you know is inside, and we're going to have a lot of fun talking with her today. If today is your first time being here at the Cashflow Diary Podcast, here's what I want you to do. Go over to learninvestingnow.com. Again, that's learninvestingnow.com. When you get over there, guess what's going to happen? You're going to learn investing and now, and most importantly, put in your name and information because you'll be able to get one of my specific specific tools that I use all the time when it comes to doing due diligence on real estate transactions, but you could also use it for all kinds of transactions, whether that's single family, multifamily, commercial buildings, it doesn't really matter. Plus, you're going to get a series of emails and information that will help you to become a bigger investor in a shorter period of time, shorten those learning curves and make those things happen, especially as it relates to the vocabulary. Now, today's guest is best known internationally as the functional medicine doc. Now, first of all, I, I love that. I love the idea that medicine actually has a function, functional medicine. She helps and finds the root cause of health problems with natural treatment so patients can feel normal again. Now, we, we probably should ask her what's normal because I, I haven't seen normal a normal person in a long time. Dr. Carey has been in private practice since 1996. She has dual degrees. Now, get this, in chiropractic and naturopathic medicine, Dr. Carey has and additional training in functional medicine and the Kalish method. We're going to ask her if I said that correctly. And a certified gluten practitioner. She's always an avid learner. Dr. Carey strives to be the best in her field. And those are the only people we want to make sure that we talk to here at the Cashflow Diary podcast. Help me welcome Dr. Carey Driska. Are you there? I'm here. Hi, Jay. Hi, listeners. Hey. Now, is it, how do you say, it? is it Kalish method? Did I mess that up? A little bit. It's Kalish, but we won't tell Dr. Kalish. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. That just says to the listeners that, hey, guess what? This isn't Jay's thing. Now, you, you, there are a couple of things that I, I, I've got to cover just as in our basics, but then I've got some very interesting questions, uh, at least for you, that I think many people are wondering right now. Now, I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs like yesterday's superheroes. Like, you know, they put on capes, they save people from themselves in various different ways. And, and clearly doctors have played that role in society for quite some time. And I also think entrepreneurs pay, play that role as well. But before we get into, you know, the functional medicine and all this other stuff, my question to you is, uh, what was y your origin? Because every superhero begins, you know, as just somebody at home and then they get, you know, inspired by something and they become the superhero. And I'm just curious as to, to before you, you know, were known as the functional medicine doc, who was Dr. Carey? I guess, Jay, the, the best way to answer that would be as I was going through chiropractic school initially, that's the first degree that I got. I was learning all about the body. It was so interesting. And just learning how we can heal the body as chiropractors by using our hands. Mm. I was fascinated with that. And then the more I learned about natural medicine, alternative medicine, detoxification, vitamins, minerals, I went down this whole path that brought me to functional medicine. And I completely fell in love with the with the uh, premise of functional medicine. And 
it's it's been a real process. It wasn't just like one light bulb moment. It's just <laughs> been a step by step kind of a thing. Right, right. Well, you bring up something that's interesting is because I've, uh, you know, I'm new to your world, obviously, but well, what I I've never heard the term functional medicine. What what is that? It sounds like it's something I want. It sounds like it's something I'd actually get behind more than it would be, you know, the traditional. Uh, I'll call it Western medicine with prescriptions and drugs. And I've been going to, well, I had a car accident, which led me to a, a chiropractor and I've been going there for years now and I love it, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious what functional medicine means to you. And that's a great question because honestly, a lot of people have never heard of functional medicine. So it's, it's really new for a lot of people. So in three simple sentences, mm-hmm. find the cause, mm-hmm. fix the cause so you can feel normal again. So functional medicine doctors, we look at the whole patient because everything in your body really is connected. Okay, hold on. You said functional medicine doctors. There's a group of you? There is a group of us. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is new. Keep going. I like this. Yeah. So functional medicine doctors. So we consist of, uh, as a group, we are um, chiropractors, naturopathic doctors, even a lot of medical doctors are getting trained in functional medicine. Hmm. And so, like I said, it's about, you know, Understanding that really everything in your body is connected, the chemistry, the hormones, the digestion, the neurotransmitters, everything's connected in your body. And so our job is to really pinpoint what is the root underlying cause of your health problem, whether it's fatigue or insomnia or heartburn or IBS or headaches or whatever it is, find the real root underlying cause. And then once we find the cause, to fix that using natural treatments. So that could be diet changes, finding your food sensitivities and stop eating those foods, using specific vitamins or herbs to replenish the body, even using things like chiropractic, like acupuncture. These are all within the realm of fixing the underlying cause. And so once you fix the cause and you can get the body back into balance, you'll feel normal again. And really you, you have now truly achieved a new state of health. So it's definitely not band-aid medicine. It's not, (laughs) it's not using uh, medication to cover up a symptom and it's not using herbs or vitamins to cover up symptoms either, because there's a lot of health practitioners out there that are actually doing that. Interesting. Yeah. Using herbs and vitamins to cover up symptoms. But in functional medicine, it's really about digging and finding the real root cause. Okay. Okay. So, well, let me ask the question that's at least in the back of my mind. You said feel normal again. Is there a definition of normal? (laughs) You know, I kind of chuckled during the introduction when you said that, (laughs) because I, you know, I have that question too, Jay, what is normal at this point in time? You know, so many of us, We're stressed. A lot of us aren't eating as healthy as we should be. We're not exercising as much as we could be. So really, that does beg the question, what is normal? Got it. Well, because (laughs) I know I no entrepreneur I know could claim to be normal in any way, shape or form, even I'm I'm sure even if everything was in balance. And, And when you start saying things like fatigue, insomnia and heartburn, I'm like, that's that's just an entrepreneur, right? Aren't we're supposed to be tired and stressed and never sleeping. So. Uh, I'm I'm kind of interested to understand a little bit more uh, specifically on like, let, let's just take because I know you you've done some work in, in the fatigue area. What what are the things that you see entrepreneurs tend to suffer with that a, a functional medicine doctor could help with? Because we've got to go create cash flow. Our customers and our investors are expecting things from us. The more energy we had, obviously, if we weren't tired, we could do more of it. So I'm kind of this would be interesting to find out. So it's interesting that you said that, that a lot of entrepreneurs have fatigue, insomnia, heartburn, and and they think it's normal, but it's not normal at all. It's it may be common, but it's not normal. Got it. So so first to really understand what is common is not normal. Got it. And that. As entrepreneurs, because I myself, I'm an entrepreneur also. I own my own practice. And and like any entrepreneur, we're 
putting in our, we're putting in our dues, <laughs> put it kindly. Yes. We were crazy hours. Our brain never really shuts off. Ooh. I mean, even for me, I'll, I'll pop, you know, I'll wake up at, you know, three o'clock in the morning and I, an idea will pop right into my head or I'm thinking of a patient. So my brain is always on just like probably yours is and probably <laughs> the majority of our listeners. Like you can never quite shut that brain off. Right. And when you said insomnia, I'm like, how's that going to work? Because as soon as you get inspired with that idea, you got to get up and do something about it or else it's gone. So I, this, yes, please continue. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'd, I'd really love for your listeners to understand is that, you know, Jay, I know you're, you, you're great at teaching people how to build their cash flow and to teach them about investing and, and, make more real estate investors out there because uh, in North America, yes. especially it, it is the, the business owners, the entrepreneurs that will really bring us out of this, you know, econ economic slump that we're in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Agreed. And so what I'd really love for your listeners to understand that you're investing, um, you're acquiring assets and, to really think about your most important asset really is your health. Mm. And I know I'm not saying anything new there. I know everybody really knows that their most important asset is their health, but are they really doing everything that they can to help their health? Right. Probably not. Uh, so with that being this case, I know in your book uh, that is um, you, you talk about the eight fatigue factors. And I, as I was looking through it, I was like, wow, I, I never thought about something causing me to be tired, like something else that, because it, it, it hints at the idea that there's something I'm doing externally that's actually causing me to be tired and I don't have to be this way. Could you unpack and expand that idea a little bit? Oh, yeah, absolutely, Jay. And actually in the book, I talk about, well, that I, I have found 14 fatigue oh. factors. And in the book, I talk about eight of them. Oh, okay. And so part of why people end up with fatigue, and this is not going to be anything new or earth shattering, is because our lives get out of balance. Mm -hmm. You know, as entrepreneurs, and I'll say, Jay, I am not perfect. And for all the listeners out there, I am not perfect. I struggle with maintaining balance in my life and, and keeping health at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm right out there with everybody. Sure. But but yeah, usually it starts with an imbalance in the lifestyle and it could be, you know, starting to skip breakfast every day or putting more and more coffee in our bodies to to try and keep the energy up. Uh shaving off our hours of sleep because we're trying to get so much done in our day. And so it's things like this and then Usually what's next is exercise. Exercise kind of gets put on the back burner for a lot of people because they'd rather take that time and invest it in their, in their business. Mm. Does any of that sound familiar, Jay? It's unfortunately starting to sound like a checklist. So uh, let's keep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's usually how it starts is yeah. imbalance within the lifestyle. And then we're not eating as healthy as we could be. And so then there's a whole domino effect that happens in the body. We start getting nutrient deficiencies that can cause fatigue. We can start getting um, imbalances within the, the brain chemistry and that can cause fatigue. We can get start getting imbalances in the stress hormones and the sex hormones and that can cause fatigue. So there's a, there's a whole trickle down effect that creates a lot of mess in the body. And, and well, I guess I'm there to help figure out that mess and clean it up. Got it. Got it. Now you speak of, you, you spoke of one that I'm actually interested to understand a little bit more about, but the, the one thing I will say is, uh, I, I do breakfast. I love bre breakfast food. I don't understand it. I can have it 24 hours a day. It's absolutely awesome all the time. Uh, and that, that's, but that's just me. But you spoke of nutrition, nu you said a nutrient deficiency. Yes, nutrient that, deficiencies. Would I be correct in my understanding? And you just tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's you're, you're eating, but you're not still, even though you eat and you haven't gotten, your body hasn't received the nutrients it needs to function. That's what it sounds like you're saying. Is that yeah, accurate? Yeah, you might be eating that. So there's two scenarios here. One, you might be eating a really great diet, 
but mm. still not be getting the nutrients into your bloodstream like you should be. Mm. Or two, you're not eating a really great diet like the majority of us. We're eating nutrient deficient foods. And because of that, we end up with nutrient deficiencies too. Interesting. Well, and I guess, Jay, sorry, there's a third scenario. Oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. Keep you guys on the edge of your seats. So the third scenario is we are under so much stress mm -hmm. that we use up our vitamins and minerals much faster, you know, so your body can cope with all the stress that we're putting it in. And so because we're burning through our nutrients faster, we end up with deficiencies too. Okay. So then answer me this. How do we get ourselves into a situation to where we can still produce, still create. I mean, because uh, as an entrepreneur, we live off our ability to create and that creative energy to, well, takes energy. Uh, and all of these things that we're responsible for, heaven forbid, should we have children, right? And all this other stuff. How, how do we fix it? That's a great question because you're right. A lot of entrepreneurs lead very full lives. They've got business going. Mm-hmm. They've got their future business going mm -hmm. and they've got their families to take care of. And usually that includes children too. So, so a lot of them can get stretched very thin. So when it comes to uh, nutrient deficiencies or diet, so the thing is to try and eat as healthy as you can. And for some of you, it would be wise to think about investing in uh, a cook or personal chef to come and, and fill up your, your refrigerator with fresh food three or four days out of the week or five or seven. Uh -huh. Did you say a cook? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's people out there that do that, that come to your house. Oh, you can tell them, this is what I like to eat. These are my food allergies. Now you know? i got to make sure my wife does not hear this episode. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to say, see, now the doctor said we need a cook too. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, you know you know, I guess I think as entrepreneurs, we need to delegate as much as we can, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And really focus on what we are, what our best, what we are best at, what are where our talents really lie. So uh, sometimes um, entrepreneurs, we we forget about delegating some of those other things like the cooking and the cleaning. Yeah, I, I, she's been after for cook for a while. This, you're not helping me right now. Oh, sorry. That's okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> it's only tens of thousands of people listening. And, um, you know, hey, it, it's fine. I'm sure someone will end up emailing her saying, Hey, you got to listen to this one. The doctor said you guys could have a cook. It, it'll be great. It's just an idea. <laughs> you know what? But some of the other things, like one of the easy things to do, Jay, uh, and probably a lot of the listeners have heard of this. You know, they kind of struggle with, should I eat organic food? What foods should I eat organic? Yeah, well, let's talk about that because, see, one of the things that I've noticed now, I go over to uh, a project that I'm working on is in Central America. And on this, uh, in this particular country and on this island, they, that the food is 100% organic. They don't have pesticides in the country. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and yeah, obviously it tastes much better, especially the fruits. I love the fruits over there. Can't get enough of it. I mean, and all I do is drink the juice every time I go. It's like every, every kind of, you know, fruit, they've got a juice for it and it's awesome. So does, does, would that help, uh, in some way, shape or form? Is there something, I mean, clearly I know I'm not supposed to eat 12 Snickers bars, right? I, I got that. But what should I eat and how can I make that? Uh, that transition as smooth and as inexpensively as possible to be able to put myself in a position to where I can create and function. And in my case, do lots of negotiations and finding these deals and, and making things happen. So one of the tools that we have, uh, there's a website by the environmental working group. It's www.ewg.org. Mm -hmm. And they have a list of the foods that are the most sprayed with pesticides. They call it the dirty dozen. <laughs> it's actually the dirty dozen plus they've, they've, they have a list of 14 uh, fruits and vegetables. And so this list of 14, this, these are the foods that have the highest levels of pesticides. And so these are the ones that you really want to be investing in 
to buy organic. Excellent. And for some of the listeners out there, and, and I get this question a lot within my practice, gee, Dr. Carey, you know, my money's not growing on trees right yet. You know, what, what should, what food should I buy organic and what food do I not have to even worry about? So on that web- website, www.ewg.org, they have a list of the worst foods and then the foods that are the cleanest that you can buy just regular conventional does not have to be organic. So to give you and your listeners an example, the, the top four on the dirty dozen that are the highest sprayed, number one is apples, mm. number two is celery, number three is cherry tomatoes, and number four is cucumbers. Interesting. So those you always want to buy organic as much as you can. And then the cleanest foods that you do not have to buy organic, number one, asparagus, number two, avocados, number three, cabbage, and number four, cantaloupe. Interesting. Now, I'm assuming then as part of someone, like if someone comes to your practice, part of what you're examining uh, is what they're eating and uh do you ever make recommendations or changes to that so that they can experience more energy? Like just walk us through an example of how, you know, like for, you know, hypothetically me, I come in and I'm like, look, I'm tired. Um, help you. How do we go from I'm tired help to, Oh my God, I feel so much better. Are you tired of letting good cash flow generating ideas go to waste? Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready to apply for a complimentary, yes, that means free, one-on-one breakthrough session. Take action now. Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready. Again, that's cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready. Before we get back to today's episode of the Cashflow Diary podcast, your host Jay Massey has some important insights to share with you. All right. You're probably wondering what on earth are we doing investing this time talking about food and energy or just how we feel? Well, many of you may know that one of the things that I'm in the process of mastering and becoming better at is getting things done. And yes, I I use those words intentionally, uh, referencing David Allen and his program, as well as his book, Getting Things Done. When it comes to actually doing the work that you've defined and that you know that you're going to do, etc. There are four criteria that he uses, one being the context, uh, the time available is number two, the priority and then energy available. So being aware of the energy that you have available at any given point in the day, like you have energies, cycles and all these other things has been something that's come to the forefront of my attention. And most importantly, well, if it's like, well, if I'm tired, how can I possibly get more out of my day by putting myself in a position to where I'm not so tired all the time. Now, that may not be your case. I'm I'm just saying, think about it, you know? And these are the things that I continue to persevere with just to make sure that I can squeeze, if I can, squeeze even more productivity, do even more uh, with the same 24 hours or 86,400 seconds, 168 hours, however you want to look at it, that we all have every uh, day or week. And uh, be more productive with the time that you have. Because clearly, yes, we want to create cash flow. But yeah, I think we all want to do it for a reason. And one of those reasons, at least in my case, is to invest even more time where things where, with the things that matter, like my kids and family. So with that being said, I, I just wanted to give you some background as to why this stuff I believe is important. And I think you should give it a look-see. And most importantly, let's get back to the interview. So what usually happens is when you come into my office or we do this virtually through Skype or or the phone, what I'll do is, just like any doctor, we'll go through a full history. You'll fill out uh, an extensive questionnaire, and this is all giving me clues as to where that fatigue might be coming from. The next thing I'll do is I'll look over whatever blood work you've already had done because, Jay, most patients that come see me, They've already been to their medical doctor. They've already had blood work done. And and usually the medical doctor is like, well, all your tests are normal. I Maybe you're going through a burnout or maybe you need some antidepressants. I don't really know. So 
usually when patients come to me, they've already kind of been down the route of the medical doctor. So I'll, I'll, I'll always get copies of whatever tests have already been done through their medical doctor, through their specialists. And I'll look and see what are their numbers. Because, Jay, what a lot of people don't know is a lot of these uh, ranges that are the normal ranges on the blood work are very broad. And what I'm looking for as a functional med- medicine doctor, I'm looking for are your numbers ideal for health? Mm. So, for example, um, uh, vitamin B12 is very commonly tested in patients that have fatigue because it's a very common cause of fatigue. Now, the range for vitamin B12 is from like 150 to 625. So that's the normal range. Okay. Really, ideally, your B12 should always be above 600. Oh. And now when a patient comes to see me, usually their B12 is in the 200s. Got it. And And their doctor. And their doctor says, well, that's normal. And I say, ooh, that is that is not ideal. We need to get that up. Got it. And so so that I understand, when you say the B12, and what role does that play in terms of my energy? Oh, that, that's a great question. B12 is needed for all different parts of your body, for your cardiovascular system, for your immune system. Um, For your brain, it it is well known that low B12 will contribute to poor concentration, foggy brain, poor memory, bordering on, like at the extreme, dementia, anxiety, depression. Interesting. Yeah. Now, well, since you bring up, you know, the brain in this particular case is, I mean, is there any truth to the the words that you can sometimes hear or say or people are like you know that's just all in your head sometimes it really is all in your head (laughs) oh okay got it and i say that tongue in cheek but the truth is for me Mm -hmm. because i i wrote this book uh, because i struggled with fatigue for years and so in the book i write about my story about fatigue and for cases from my private practice and we're all a little bit different in where the core root cause of fatigue was but jay for me the core root cause of my fatigue it really was in my head and what i mean by that was it was an imbalance within my serotonin and dopamine so within my brain chemistry there was an imbalance there so it was in my head and once i figured that out once i figured out the correct a little uh, recipe of amino acids to build my brain chemistry. My fatigue was gone within a week, and it was like my brain was back online, working at 100%. All the light bulbs were back on. Interesting. In a week? Wow. Once I figured out the right recipe, within a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I, I hear what you're saying. Once I figured out the right recipe, yeah. It takes time. (laughs) Right, right. So, so going back, so the patient will come in, I'll review their blood work. Then what I'll do is I'll fill in the gaps, whatever blood work has not been run. And for, for the listeners out there, I often find that vitamin D is rarely tested in my patients and that's a underlying cause of fatigue. And so I'll fill in the gaps with blood work. And then from there, depending on the case, I might test for food allergies I might test to see, do, does this person have like an infection in their intestines, a parasite infection or bacterial overgrowth? Do they have hormone imbalances? So we might do hormone testing. So it, along the way, I, I start going down the, the road of testing that is the right, the right path for the patients. It's always about doing the right thing at the right time in the right order to get the body back into balance and to get you feeling normal again. Interesting. Got it. And you, you bring up the, the idea of being a a food allergy and I've admittedly complete novice here, but the idea of being allergic to food, it just sounds counterintuitive to my, to me. So help, help me understand what, what you mean when you say a food allergy and how that relates to energy in some way. So uh, food allergies and food sensitivities. So 
technically these are two different things within the medical realm. A uh, food allergy would be like, to give you an example, these people that eat strawberries and they immediately break out in hives, or people that eat uh, peanuts and have uh, an, an anaphylactic reaction where they get uh, swelling within their throat. That's a true food allergy. And then there's right. uh, food sensitivities, which are more uh, low grade. It's a different part of the immune system that's reacting. So because they're more low grade, they, they can be uh, delayed up to 72 hours. So what a lot of people don't know, and actually a lot of doctors don't even know this, is that food allergies and food sensitivities are known as the great mimickers within the body. So I could line up 10 people, and let's say they all have a food sensitivity to milk. They would have, it would manifest in their body in 10 different ways. So maybe one has fatigue, maybe the second gets migraines, maybe the third has eczema, maybe the fourth has constipation, maybe the fifth has diarrhea, maybe the sixth has arthritis, maybe the seventh has depression, maybe the eighth actually has anxiety, maybe the ninth has chronic pain, and the tenth, we'll just leave that as other. <laughs> so, I mean, really, food allergies wow. and sensitivities can create any symptom in your body. Okay. So then let me ask this. What are the top three things that we can do as entrepreneurs to make sure that we are at our absolute best on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Oh, boy. That's a big question there. What are the top three things you can do? So, um, so let's say first off, I truly believe that food can be your medicine. It can be your medicine or it could be your poison. I see. So first would be diet. So eating a good, healthy diet. And I know you're probably thinking, okay, well, what diet should I be eating? <laughs> <laughs> the thought occurred to me, but <laughs> I, I am slightly psychic too, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 There it is. So I guess the best diet that I have seen across the board would be the paleo diet. Have you heard of that, Jay? I heard the word. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you can tell I'm not exactly well versed in these things. I've heard it's okay. of people. You know, going a lot of down now. yeah, a lot of people have never heard of the paleo diet. So it's basically eating the foods that we were meant to eat back in the day when we were cavemen during the hunter gatherer period of our ancestry. So what, what has happened is that we have industrialized our whole food system. And so we have made tomatoes in such a way that they, they're able to travel to us from South America, from China, from wherever. They have a little pinkness to them, but they don't actually still taste like tomato. And a lot of foods are becoming um, genetically modified too. So if we can just go back to the foods that really we were meant to eat, if we can just do that, and that is a paleo diet, that in and of itself can change a lot of people's health in very dramatic ways. Got so for, for you and for your listeners out there, you could easily do an internet search for paleo breakfast or paleo diet or paleo snacks, and you'll find millions of websites, blogs, Facebook pages, all dedicated to all things paleo. Got so it. I guess that would be the first thing is to really, you know, your food is your medicine and it can be a very powerful medicine. I think for number two would be stress management. What do you mean? Well, stress management can come in a lot of different forms. Some listeners might find doing something like meditation, you know, taking time every day, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes to just take a moment, focus on their breath, and just focus on purely getting relaxed. So we could do stress management in that way. Meditation is not an easy thing to achieve for us entrepreneurs because we can never really shut our brains off. <laughs> But one of the things, and I wrote about this in my book, one of the techniques that I have used that I have found helpful is 
you you uh, sit in a room that's quiet, you know, shut your email alerts off, shut your cell phone off, just, you know, be quiet and just start at five minutes and close your eyes, take a deep breath in. And when you breathe in, imagine your favorite color, just breathing in your favorite color and it, you know, going all through your body, holding that breath and then letting that breath out. And as you breathe out, breathing out a color that you hate or calling it breathing out blackness and just kind of focusing on those colors can help quiet your mind. Hmm. And just like we were talking about the paleo diet, you could do an internet search for different meditation techniques to just really find one that works the best for you. Got it. Okay. And, and one of the things that I do personally for stress management, which is kind of like the total opposite from meditation is I do boxing. Nice. And so what I'll do, and, and I go twice a week, and it's not sparring and, and hitting other people, but it's it's putting on the gloves and hitting the heavy bag. And that's a way that I, like, physically get the stress and tension out of my body by hitting the heavy bag. And so that's what works for me. It might not work for everybody. Well, but no, to find – I think some people want to actually hit the people, but yeah, I hear where you're going with yeah, the bag. Yeah, so you the imagine the people, <laughs> you imagine the people in your head and then you hit the heavy bag. But yeah, to to find a physical way to get that stress out of your body through some form of exercise. I am you know, like I said at the top of the show, I'm not perfect. I struggle with maintaining good health just like everybody else. I actually don't like to exercise. But once I found boxing, that really, that is what finally clicked for me for exercise and stress management. Nice. So whatever it is for you. Got it. And then the number number three, three, I guess number three would be to take a really good multivitamin. I mean, mean? what do you, when you say multi, so the, is this the addressing like the nutrient deficiency you were referring to earlier? Yeah, to kind of uh, a multivitamin to help address those some of those nutrient deficiencies that you probably have that you don't even know about and kind of as good health insurance, too. Interesting. How would one find out if they have a nutrient? Other than, oh, I'm tired. How does one find out if they have a nutrient deficiency? So most nutrient deficiencies can be found through blood work. And some of those tests can be done by, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're not anything uh, special. You know, it could be a, a standard test through your doctor mm-hmm. for iron, for B12, for vitamin D. And then there, there is, Jay, there is a lab. It's called SpectraCell Labs. And I think their website is www.spectracell.com. They actually have the most comprehensive way to test for nutrient deficiencies. So what they do is you got to send a tube of blood off to the lab and they'll, they'll literally crack open the blood cells to check and see what nutrients are inside of your blood cells. Cause it's one thing, you know, going back to just eating, Mm -hmm. we eat, we have to digest and absorb. It's got to travel through the bloodstream and then it's got to penetrate into the cells that's really where all the action happens in your body is inside the cells. So this test by SpectraCell, this comprehensive nutrient analysis, they crack the cells open to actually measure the vitamins and nutrients inside of the cells. So that's actually the best way to see what you're deficient in or insufficient in. Interesting. Got it. So now for those uh, who are wondering, uh, the eight you know, what the the eight fatigue factors are. Could you go over them real fast? And then most importantly, if they want to get more information on this, give us an idea of what it is that they could do. Oh, sure. So, so the eight fatigue factors that I mentioned in the book, number one is anemia and number two is thyroid problems. And if you have fatigue, those two things, anemia and thyroid problems should always be checked for first and these are usually the tests that are done by a family doctor or a medical doctor. Unfortunately, most of the time these tests come back normal. And this is when your doctor kind of shrugs their shoulders and says, I really don't know where this is coming from. 
you know, maybe you need a vacation. Maybe you, maybe you're starting a burnout or maybe we should put you on antidepressants. That's really the story that I get. And then uh, number three on the list is cortisol imbalance. So cortisol is the hormone that gets secreted when we're under chronic stress. Hmm. Four is blood sugar imbalance, blood sugar being too high, blood sugar being too low. For a lot of people, their blood sugar is like on a roller coaster. Number five is nutrient deficiencies. And in the book, I outline the four most common. And I'll tell you right now, they're vitamin D iron, B12, and magnesium. Number six is chronic infections. And by that, I mean a parasite infection, uh, overgrowth of yeast, an imbalance of uh, bacteria. If you've ever been on antibiotics, what the research is showing, Jay, is that one round of antibiotics will cause chaos in your intestines for up to four years. Oh, wow. That's one round of antibiotics. And then for your listeners, anybody that is on like um, uh, heartburn medication, so proton pump in- inhibitors or antacids, that will cause a trickle down effect in your intestines and create um, infections. And then the third one was uh, painkillers. Anybody that's chronically on painkillers, that you know use, you're using Tylenol three four times a week or aspirin or ibuprofen, that's also, you probably have a a bacterial overgrowth in your intestines. Wow. So that was number six. So number seven is food allergies and sensitivities. We kind of talked about that earlier, that food allergies and sensitivities really can cause any symptom in your body. They are the great mimickers. And then number eight is brain imbalance. Literally that serotonin and dopamine can be out of balance. That was the case with me. And that can trigger fatigue. Wow. Those are the the eight fatigue factors. Excellent. And for those who would want some additional information and maybe to delve deeper, if you would share with us uh, the title of the book, how we can find it. And most importantly, uh, you said there were 14. So yes. where are the other six? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so. So uh, the name of the book is Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Fixing the Root Cause of Your Fatigue with Natural Treatments. And you can get a copy of the book at Amazon. It's available in paperback and Kindle forms. You can also get a copy of the book through my website, www.drcarry.com. And that's spelled D-R-C-A-R-R-I. And then when you go to the website, if you want to download the free reports, all you have to do is give us your, your name, your email address. You'll be able to download the free reports. And that is where you'll be able to find the additional six fatigue factors. Gotcha. Makes sense. Excellent. So if, if you had a, a shot right now and you knew that there was an entrepreneur out there looking for you know how to balance that, that work, or maybe they're still at the job, maybe they're trying to to create the business and they're looking for that extra time or that extra energy so that when they come home or when they can get up early in the morning to make things happen, uh, what would be your number one recommendation for them right now? You know, I guess my number one recommendation would be to, to start your day with a good breakfast. And and I know that's kind (laughs) of cliche. You've heard it all before. Could it really be that easy? Yeah, it can really be that easy. And by a good breakfast, I mean, a breakfast that has 25 to 30 grams of protein in it, no fruit, no grains. And that would, that would be the best way to start your day. Wow. And, and, and to let entrepreneurs know that it's the, it's, it really ends up being the little things that make the biggest change in your health, just like it can be the littlest things that make the biggest change in your, in your business too. So do small little things every day that starts you on the road to better health. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate the time that you've invested here with us. Thanks for being here. You're welcome, Jay. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. I know there's a number of you. You've made it this far in the episode, and you're like, man, I need more and got to do something about it. Absolutely. You go over to drcarry.com. That's D-R-C-A-R-R-I 
dot com and go ahead and get started. Find get those extra six uh, fatigue factors. Find out what they are. Understand what they are. Find the ones that are affecting your energy because you never know at the negotiation table. That's the last place you want to fall asleep. So make sure that you guys are out there making things happen. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Until next time. (laughs) 